Okay, we are now live. Uh, right, uh, Councillor Hawkins was just uh, in the middle or possibly close to the end of her presentation as local member, and perhaps I uh, would like to complete that. We heard, I think we can say, effectively everything you'd said to today. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think um, you probably heard most of what I needed to say anyway. Um, I'm in support of this application. I think it's, um, it's a good way for us to increase our um, um, energy generation. Um, and it will be good for the um, uh, for children farms as it brings in the diversification for them. So, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I think as we've heard from all the public speakers, both local members, we have no objections to statutory consultees and no parish councils asking for refusal. I would be inclined to move to the vote if that is if that would be acceptable. We all agreed we move to the vote. I'm not proposing to second that, we just move to the vote. So can we now take the formal vote? The recommendation is on page 162, I think. Here we go. Page one, five, five. Thank you very much. The recommendation, no is on page 155, uh, and that is what we are voting on. I shall now do so. No, I shan't. I'm not, I'm not voting. So that somebody hasn't yet voted. Yes, we've all voted, and that is approved. Thank you very much for your patience and staying with us. Right, good night all. <laughs> yeah, we might well do that on the issues that were raised. Um, so let's uh, then decide what we do next. Um, I said we're going to finish by 6.30. Uh, I don't think there's any way we can realistically tackle what is listed as item eight. Um, too many issues arising there in, in Pington. Uh, I'm not convinced. I, I think we can probably tackle item 11 and possibly then item 9. I don't think there's any way we can tackle item 10, which is West Green at Barrington. Um, and that would then bring us to the end. So my proposal to the committee is that we again reorder the, the agenda take what is listed as item 11, um, and then, if time, take what is listed as item 9. I mention those two because, under our constitution, they both have to be dealt with by the planning committee, and there is, of course, no further committee till June. Is that acceptable to the committee? Yes. So we then proceed to item 11 on page 235, and our director has kindly agreed to stand in as case officer on this. Uh, Chair, thank you. Um, we actually have the case officer uh, oh. online, but um, mindful, mindful of time and, and um, with your uh, uh, agreement, Alice, I think the application itself is relatively straightforward. Um, it's, an, uh, it's a proposal for uh, works to um, uh, an existing bungalow, uh, and um, I think it's well detailed in, in, in the report. Uh, uh, the um, merits of the proposal. There is a, um, uh, there is a, uh, a first floor being created, but the fundamental essence of the scheme is, is driven from a desire to reduce the carbon footprint of the building. Uh, there are no material um, objections uh, or, or comments that have been received. You can see Long Stanton Parish Council have uh, no objection and there are no representations. So my, my um, Suggestion, Chair, um, unless there are particular points of concern that Alice certainly is av available to, to deal with, is that um, uh, we, we don't offer a presentation um, uh, for this item. Thank you. Um, Chairman, I'd like to pro propose we go to the vote, and I'd like to propose that. Propose that second. All agreed? Yeah. Let's take the vote, and because of the nature of the decision, we need to do this by the formal process as well. Obviously, if you're in favour, green. We, 
everybody voted we unanimous. Good. Um, if only we could get that rate of progress on all the rest, <laughs> we wouldn't still be here. Uh, let's move on then to item nine, the land to the rear of 90 High Street, Melbourne. And I note that Councillor Joe Hales has a potential conflict and is not is going to withdraw from the meeting for this item. However, we remain quarried. Page 197, um, who's presenting on this one? Chair, I believe um, the case officer, uh, Jane Roden, is going to be um, uh, presenting on, on this, if she's uh, still available online. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can I just confirm that you can see my slide, if that's all right? We can now, oh, thank you. Brilliant. Okay, so this application is for the construction of a new dwelling and alterations for existing access to the land to the rear of 90 High Street, Melbourne. Um, here's a location plan. As you can see, the access is adjacent to 90 High Street, Melbourne, and it's to the rear of the site. Here's a proposed site plan. As you can see, it's quite heavily treed with the access running along the southwestern boundary with the dwelling at the rear. Uh, here's a constraints map in front of you. As you can see, the application is outside the development framework boundary, which is the black dashed line inside the conservation area, which is the pink line and adjacent to Stockbridge Meadows, which is the green hashed area to the rear. Is proposed ground floor plans and first floor plans. The building is proposed into a U shape with a mixture of ground and first floor elements. His proposed elevations, west elevation and north, a south elevation and east. And here's a further detailed plan of the access that's being proposed. Here's some photos, I'll just go through them quickly for you. So this is looking into the access site. Looking north up High Street, south. Here's the current structure that's on the site that's to be demolished as part of this proposal. It's some of the, the trees that you can see looking into the site from Stockbridge Meadows. And this is the other dwellings further to the north of the site, but from the view outside the proposal site. So my recommendation is refusal due to the principle of development and the proposed visibility space have been raised by the Highways Authority. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I trust there will be no questions. That seemed fairly straightforward. Let's move straight to our um, first speaker, Stuart Everett. I don't know whether Stuart Everett, who's the agent for this application, is still with us. Are you there, Stuart? I am, yeah. Can you hear me? Well done. Thank you for staying on with us. Yes, please. Uh, you have the usual three minutes when you're ready. Yeah, OK. <clears throat> um, I'd like to start by talking about the principle of development and then I'll move on to the driveway issues. Um, so planning policy defines development bound. Yep. Concern for one of the councillors present. Chair. I didn't catch Mr. who Mr Stewart, who this gentleman is, sorry. Mr Everett, perhaps you would just start by explaining your role in this, uh, introduce yourself and then, then you'll have your three minutes. Of course, yeah. Sorry, I'm the architect and agent for the proposal. So, um, yes. Uh, planning policy defines development boundaries to prevent encroachment of the countryside and incremental growth into areas of insuff insufficient infrastructure. The land under consideration is part of the historic garden of 90 High Street. The boundary of this garden can be tracked through historic maps for over 100 years and is still, it's still clearly recognisable on site. Despite being inside this garden boundary, the proposal sits just outside the development framework boundary, which suggests that it's in the open countryside. To put it simply, we don't believe this to be the case. The plot is part of a large domestic garden, which has been in use for many decades. It consists of a large natural clearing, garden buildings, has a mown lawn. There's a swimming pool just off that mown lawn. In our eyes, it's undeniably domestic in its appearance and use. Referring back to policy, the word encroachment suggests approval of this scheme would set a dangerous precedent for development of neighbouring plots. 
Again, this isn't the case. If you look at the site plan, this is the last plot that doesn't have a building in this location. What we've essentially got is an area of land that's not in the development framework, but also not in open countryside. So if for a moment we sidestep the principle of where that line is drawn on the map and look at the aims of local and national policy, which are essentially to provide sustainable growth in locations that can support it, here we have a proposal for a house for a local family which has been acknowledged as architecturally acceptable in a sustainable location with pre-existing access services within an existing pattern of development and which also doesn't set a dangerous precedent for encroachment to the countryside. So we would argue in balance that this proposal meets the greater aims of planning policy. And it's worth noting that this principle has been acknowledged across local appeal decisions within the last five years. Um, moving on to the driveway, uh, there's two matters. One, it's been suggested that the introduction of a house would unduly affect the existing neighbouring access. I don't believe this to be a relevant planning matter for two reasons. The first, the proposal seeks to, to merge two driveways. The applicant owns both these driveways in their entirety and they maintain the right to use either driveway as required without planning permission. The current status of infrequent use is by choice and not any legal limitation. To put it bluntly, the applicant can choose to, drive, to park on either driveway. They simply choose to park on the one that favours them at the moment. The second reason is that the applicant, Mr Cecilia Rhodes, currently lives as a guest of the owners of 90 High Street. So there's already three households using two driveways. There's no new traffic that will be generated by the house and any suggestion of intensification of use is purely theoretical. Whilst it's noted that merging the driveways is a material planning matter, this has been acknowledged as acceptable by the conservation officer. And you'll see from that photo that Jane showed, what we've currently got is two very narrow driveways of a high hedge in between. The proposal is to merge those two driveways into one, which will drastically increase safety for all three occupants. And whilst we don't meet current standards for new build highways access points, we are offering the best that could possibly be offered within the, the historic setting. Comments because we're sort of out of time now. That's it. That's your presentation. Thank you very much indeed. Right. I don't think we have any questions for you. Um, we now come to the debate. Does anyone want to uh, lead off? Councillor um, Hawkins. Thank you, Chair. I'm, I, I'm kind of I'm looking at this, and the only objection I see from our statutory consultees is from highways. And it seems to be because of the disability display. But then, from what the agent has just said, that doesn't seem to be a problem. So I am confused. Can we have some clarification? Director. <laughs> uh, I wonder if um, uh, the case officer can show the um, uh, site access arrangements and just explain the, the, the basis. Yes, that would be you. helpful. Thank you. Not a problem. Only one second. Can you see that slide? Yes, we can. Brilliant. So this is, if I zoom in a bit here, so this is the proposed access here. Um, the, the hedge that's been removed is probably where this car is in the middle. The, the issue that Highways Authority have is this blue line here is the visibility splay. And as you can see, it just cuts off the neighbour, the neighbouring property. Um, that's the concern that they have, that the, all the visibility displays couldn't be provided inside the um, ownership. I'll zoom in a bit further. It's, it's this area here is their main concern. Could we ask for an explanation of what that means in real life? What, what, it, does it mean that if you were coming out, you wouldn't be able to see the person at number 88 High Street if they were coming out? Is that what we mean? So potentially, the, the concerns from the House authorities is you were coming out and you were turning left, 
you wouldn't have clear visibility up the path if something was either put in here. Um, of course, most visibility stays requested by the local highways authority would have a condition on them to be kept clear um, over a certain height. And of course, that's what we couldn't guarantee in this case if um, these vis visibility stays were used. We couldn't guarantee that that, that small or well, that triangle there would be kept clear, which would be a condition requested by the local highways authority. Right, uh, Councillor Redden wants to come back on that. I was just looking for the report of the highways. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rodens. I just wanted if, to understand the driveway, which you've got highlighted in grey, mm -hmm. highlighted in grey, is obviously very narrow as it goes <coughs> between the house line. And, and I'm just wondering what would happen if somebody was trying to, sorry, does it also provide access to the house to the right, which is number 90? Is that, is yes, what, so was, it, was it originally a shared drive and that's why 90 is so close? If I, I go to this plan, the first, uh, this photo here probably best shows it. So this is the current access at the moment. So this is the access to number 90, which turns right on that photo. Yeah. And then this is the access to the other property here. So as the agent said at the moment, this access, this one here, so you turn right to this property, turn left to this one. This access is owned by the current number 90. So to get to the new proposed property at the back, this you still have to go down number 90's access as your cursor shows it? Yes, yeah, yeah. you'd have to go down here, yeah, towards the rear here. Do we have any uh, photographs that show the, the viewpoint as a car would emerge from, looking to the left as a car would emerge from that driveway? These are probably the best ones yes, I could get. Exactly, yes. So this would be looking left up the road here. <coughs> and it's just this corner here is where the visibility display cuts off. And then this would be looking right down the other way. I, yeah. I don't have any photos stood here. I don't think we're going to get all the information we might want on, on that. Um, Councillor so, Milne. Just on that, on that point, it seems to me that we're talking about hugely marginal uh, yes. uh, issues here. Uh, and uh, we're not talking about a huge entrance to s several properties. We're talking about one additional property. Um, and so the number of exits and entrances on the, seems to be really pedantic. I detect an inclination. Sorry, you wanted to interrupt me, Councillor Bradman. Why was that? Um, I think you were going to say you detect an inclination to maybe move on. But my, my uh, No, that was not what I was going to say. But thank you for anticipating what I might have been about to say. I it detect an inclination have... from comments... Forgive me, Councillor Bradman. Let me say what I was detecting an inclination to from comments in the room of a, a sympathy to uh, approve this, but if we did so, it would clearly be in contravention of the assessment of the Highways Authority, and I want to just seek uh, the assessment of our director or, or indeed of the police officer on that. But there, there are two issues um, that mount to the reasons for refusal, one of which is the site access um, uh, that you're being asked to refuse planning permission on. If you're not, if you're of the view that the impact on highway safety is um, uh, not determinative in this matter, then you're um, entitled to um, uh, remove that as a reason for refusal. The, the other reason for refusal relates to the position of the dwelling beyond the settlement boundary, yes. which is a, which is a, uh, which you've heard uh, from the um, uh, architect, uh, the rationale, uh, and you've also um, seen uh, the point in, in the report uh, from uh, uh, the planning officers um, about the reasons why we believe that this isn't just a residential garden, this is a dwelling being constructed beyond the settlement boundary. We understand uh, the points made about 
um, the, uh, uh, the uh, functional or the um, relationship of the existing garden uh, with um, uh, and, it, and its use. Um, but, the, but in this case, the, the dwelling itself is beyond the settlement boundary. And I think it's that, were it just the domestic garden to the property, um, that would be less of a perhaps a pivotal issue. But in this case, um, my understanding is it's the it's the building itself, um, and um, that is a broader policy matter. Although you've you've heard from the architect their reasons why they feel you should set aside that in this case, the the matter is with you. You you can see from the presentation, um, uh, and indeed from the the comments made, um, the characteristics of the of the, of the site. Uh, but um, yes, it, you are perfectly entitled to uh, approve an application or refuse the application for the one or both of the reasons or indeed any other reasons that you may wish right. to bring forward. Uh, it might be helpful to have some comments on that particular uh, ref intended refusal reason, which is at paragraph 79. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question about the, um, the agent uh, suggested that there were many other uh, adjacent properties with similar backlog de developments. And I can't see from uh, the Google map, for example, uh, whether that's true, and I don't know if we've got a, um, a diagram or a map of, of properties in the immediate vicinity. I think we're bringing up a map that should hopefully show that. So there's an existing property, and somebody mentioned a, a swimming pool. The, the application site itself has a, an outdoor swimming pool that's part of the domestic pool um, uh, used in the summer, I think it's suggested in the in the garden, um, but I think the point that um, the, the, the point that um, uh, was being made is that it's a domestic garden at, at the moment, rather than the suggestion that it's open countryside. But it isn't uh, a built upon garden. Uh, right, Councillor Bradman. Is it appropriate? For, sorry, is it appropriate for me to speak? Or uh, I'm sorry, uh, we, we have heard from you, and I appreciate that you may well be able to help us on this point, but forgive me, I'm going to proceed with the debate which we've embarked on, so my apologies. Uh, I think, what order we want to take it in? So, Councillor Khan first, if we may. Okay. I'm going to have to look at this site because I wasn't sure about uh, the, the, the application and uh, the highways access and, and the other. I wanted to see what it was like on site, on grounds. Um, obviously, I couldn't see behind the building because I was only access on the road. Uh, and looking, as I understood it, when I didn't have the application with me, um, I thought they were coming out of the number 90 rather than joining the Goliathways together. Uh, and if you were coming out of number 90, the, the, the visibility is dreadful. But if you're joining, the, uh, having heard what the proposal was, um, joining driveways together, um, uh, and the fact that, in fact, already three households are using the, the access, um, the access on number 92 is actually much better. Uh, and my general feeling is that uh, it would improve the actual safety of the, uh, the, the level. So I think it's a, even if it's a minor infringement of the, the visibility display, I think I'm not very worried about the highways, and I think that would not be a reasonable reason for refusal. But it is outside the village um, development framework. Uh, uh, and that is contrary to our local plan. And if we're going to maintain our local plan, uh, we, we really would not normally encourage development outside the village framework. It's open to the applicant to seek on appeal to see whether a, an inspector would decide there was a reason, but I don't think we should be approving it. That's a reasonable reason uh, approving uh, and downgrading our local plan. Councillor Bradham, do you have yes. any points to add? Um, the point I was going to make when you thought I was interrupting you before was exactly what you were going to do, which was to say that you thought we might take it by affirmation, which I didn't want to do. No? And I just wanted to uh, explain why I I don't uh, subscribe to that view. So uh, I was not proposing to suggest that we take it by affirmation. I'm hoping to move to a vote very shortly. Uh, yes. Uh, how shortly depends so, largely so on yourself. So what I wanted to say was that, um, notwithstanding the point about the merging of the driveways, which might make access more reasonable, what concerns me is the principle of the development outside the village framework, because this this is the basically garden development in the garden of number 90. And the building that 
was there before, as you saw, was very dilapidated and it was just a, a garden pavilion. It wasn't a house in any way. And so my concern was that I don't subscribe to us encouraging the development in that location for that reason, outside the village framework and within the conservation envelope. Um, and there is only, as far as I can see, one other dwelling further back, which is number 80. Right. Thank you. So I don't subscribe to that. Uh, Councillor Batchelor. Thank you, Chair. I think we have two reasons for refusal in our, um, in our recommendation, in our agenda. I think we've had discussion and debate around both reasons. We've had explanation on both from officers as well as the agent. So I think there isn't much more to be gained by prolonging that debate. So I think we as a committee have enough information to make a decision. But I would like to move to a vote. I second. Right. Um, are we all happy we now move to a vote? Can we set? I'm going to do it, do it formally for, okay, for reasons. Right. So the recommendation is refusal. If you agree to that recommendation, you vote green. If you want to approve it, you vote red. Everybody. Right. So that is refused. Six to two. Um, there's only one other item which I suggest we need to deal with in the time. Uh, we have already told those involved in item 10 that we will not be addressing it tonight. We clearly don't have time for item eight. Uh, I don't think it's realistic for us to take the enforcement report except that we can take that as read. That's item 14. Appeals against planning decisions. Is there anything that it is? I just said that we cannot deal with item 10 because we don't have time. Do you disagree with that? No, no? good. Okay, so let's. I beg your pardon? I heard you say that we didn't have time to deal with eight, which I quite agree with, but I didn't hear you say that about 10. That was all. Yes, fair enough. Um, is there anything crucial that we hear under item 15, or can we just take note that as, as read? Uh, the reports for information. Yes, Chair. Okay, there is one further item, or two further items we need to deal with. Um, firstly, I need a proposal to exclude the press and public, hardly uh, relevant, in order to um, approve the minutes of the previous meeting, which was, of course, restricted. Uh, subject only to the uh, point that Councillor uh, Richard Williams made earlier on about revealing the item number. So do I have a proposal that we exclude the press and public, in which case we will go offline for this? Chair, Chair, sorry, do we need to formally defer all those other items first? Before we well, go we're still offline? in an open session and then come to this item. Okay. So can we have a um, proposal? Yeah, I'll propose that we formally defer the other items on our agenda, which is item 8, as listed, the former bishop site, Cambridge Road, Impington. And item 10, uh, number 7, West Green, Barrington. Uh, do we agree that we've seconded? Thank you. All agreed? agreed. Deferred. Item 7, 16, exclusion of press and public. Uh, do we all agree? agree. Affirmation? Agree. Can we then go off, off live, please? And when you tell me, we'll, we'll then go to the last remaining item. <laughs> 